I'm Insomniac, and this is the original grain Sapili Black. Well, before I get into this review, I'd like to give Jim a big shout out for letting me borrow this watch. Uh, you've actually seen quite a few of his watches on this channel at this point, and I think I have another one coming up, another one of his as well. He has a pretty cool collection, so thank you very much. Well, let's get into the watch. Okay, well, let's start with the packaging. Uh, as you all know, I don't actually score the packaging in these reviews, but I wanted to show you this because it was not a great first impression. Uh, the outer box, who cares? It's cardboard. I like when people comment on that like it really matters. But the inner box, that to me is the presentation of the watch. I'm wearing the watch, so it's not in there, but here is the box that it came in. It is wood, and it has this loose top on it. It, it looks like an intermediate shop class project in high school. And then you can't smell this on camera, but when you open it, it smells like toxic chemicals like you wouldn't believe. So let's just say that this one did not start off on a good note. The case on this piece is large, to the extent that between the large 47mm diameter, the huge chunky lugs, and the fact that the first lengths on the bracelet can only flex as far as you see here, uh, this watch actually doesn't fit my 7 inch wrist. Both sides of the bracelet actually hover over the ends of my wrist a little bit, so warning number one, if you don't have a large wrist, this isn't going to work for you. The shape of the case, minus the lugs, is pretty nice, with a bevel all the way around that kind of curves down towards the wrist. The black coating is also done well and looks to be of pretty good quality. Case back is a screw down tight, although I'm not sure why when the company doesn't recommend that you get this watch wet, but it is. It's a brushed stainless steel with fairly deep engraving, including the company name in the middle and a few pieces of information about the watch around the outside. The lugs are ridiculous. They're huge and chunky. You have this fake solid end link type thing here, which isn't part of the bracelet as you can see from underneath. It's actually a part of the case. And from the side, the lugs curve down nicely, but from the top, the lugs don't curve inward toward the bracelet. Instead, you have these giant 90 degree square edges sticking out about a mile further than the bracelet on either side. Then you have the one side of the case where the crown is. There's this weird split line in the side of the case and two circles. I'm thinking that maybe it was supposed to be a subtle addition to the design to make the case look less plain. But number one, if it's just a design cue, why wouldn't they stick that on the side that doesn't have the crown where it's super plain? And number two, whether intentional or not, what it winds up looking like is a case that isn't one solid piece, but rather a thin steel that was bent and shaped until it came together at one point and then was riveted together at this random point. I don't really get it. Next you have the crown, and sadly it doesn't help the score for this case. First, it's too small for this massive tall case. I understand why it's small. The movement is towards the bottom of this vast depth, so the stem has to be set low, and if the crown was bigger, it would dig into your wrist. But it still looks tiny in proportion to the case. Second, it has a little textured pattern in the words Original Grain Watch Co. on it, but realize that I just told you that the crown is way too small, and has a pattern on it, and four words, and you'll understand why you can't make out any of the text here on camera. And last, you have the operation of the crown. Now, it's a quartz watch, so it isn't like you're going to be winding the watch, but because of the beveled case shape, you can only pull out the crown from the bottom of the watch, and the slots on the edge of the crown aren't grippy at all, so if you have big fingers, it could wind up being a frustrating crown to manipulate. And last, you have the feature presentation of this piece, the wood. The bezel on this watch is made out of actual Sapili wood. It's well fitted to the bezel area around the crystal, and the wood itself has a nice quality look to it. But sadly, the wood bezel and the quality of the black finish are basically the only pluses to this case. The dial on this watch, unfortunately, is one of the worst dial executions I've seen on this channel other than the free watch that I reviewed recently. It's light years better than the free watch, but let's stay on topic here. This dial is a whole lot of wrong, with the exception of one thing, the finish of the main dial surface. The dial surface is a dark slate gray, almost black, radial brushed finish, which does look to be of good quality. Sadly, it goes way downhill from there, like off a cliff downhill from there. Starting with the least of the bad decisions on this dial, the numerals and indices are done as cutouts, kind of like a sandwich dial like you'd see on a Panerai, and the surface that you can see through the cutouts is the same color as the main dial. Now that does look kind of stealthy, so I wouldn't mind that if, number one, the numerals and rectangular indices were slightly larger to be proportionate with the dial's size, and number two, 
The rest of the dial were done in dark finishes to keep with the stealthy, almost monochromatic aesthetic. The slightly raised, applied original grain font is done in gold, and so are the hands. What do those go with on this watch? I uh, don't know. There may be a similar type of color to the Sapili wood in the bezel, but they don't match the Sapili. And the rest of the dial is blackish slate gray, so why the gold? As you're going to see later, time at a glance already isn't very good on this piece, so they could have at least went for the stealth aesthetic and made the hands maybe a black polished steel with black polished original grain text. That would have looked cool. And there's a white date window with black numerals. How does that fit? That should have been a black disc with white numerals, so the date window would be showing mostly black to match the dial. And sadly, it doesn't stop there. When you look at the semi-skeletonized sword-shaped hour and minute hands and the stick-style second hand, the only compliment I can give them is on the length. They're about the right length for the size of this dial, but they look cheap. The finish doesn't look great, and instead of the cutouts having a flow with the cutouts on the sandwich dial, they kind of look like cheap cast aluminum or something. And that date window that I mentioned earlier becomes more of an issue with this piece when you look at the size of the date window in proportion to the size of the dial. It's tiny. So at a quick glance, someone might not even know that it's a date window. It almost just looks like a little white square stuck next to the three. So longer story short, it's definitely not the worst style I've seen, but in terms of continuity and design flow, it's pretty terrible. The only usable complication on this watch is the date, which should be an easy 9 or 10 in this section, like it is with most watches that only have a date function, but number one, aesthetically this date window is the opposite combination of what it should have been, and number two, the date window is way too small. To the extent that on the double digit dates, even my young eyes have to give a good squint to read the date. And number three, the numerals on this date wheel aren't centered in the date window. Look closely and you'll notice that the numerals here are far left of center. So sadly, all this watch has is the date, but it wasn't well executed. Time at a glance is half great or half terrible, depending on whether you're a glass half full or glass half empty kind of person. Either way, it's only half as good as it should be. You have pointy gold hands on an almost black dial, so contrast is good there. The hands are very easy to find at a quick glance, but the indices and numerals are black behind black, or gray, or whatever. And there are no minute indices of any kind. So can you tell the time on this watch? Definitely. Can you do it quickly and precisely? No. In the time that I've had this watch, it has been extremely accurate, not that it's surprising being that it's a Japanese Miyota Quartz movement. The look of the movement is also very good. No slop or springiness to the stop of the second hand. The look of the movement is of very good quality. Holy crap, where do I even begin with the bracelet on this piece? I guess I'll start with the wood, being that the Sapili is the featured part of this watch. The wooden inserts in the bracelet links are a perfect match to the Sapili bezel, so at a quick glance it does look pretty cool. And the matte black finish of the bracelet matches the case perfectly and has a great quality look to it. The clasp is another positive here for the most part. It's a double locking deployant clasp, has a good positive click and lock to it, and holds stable anytime you're wearing it. The only downside to the clasp is the original grain engraving which is so light and shallow that they really could have just left it off and it wouldn't have made any difference. And then we fall off another cliff, starting with the wooden inserts as I mentioned a second ago. When you look closely at them, they're not all cut to the perfect size and shape of the recessed rectangles in the links. Many of them are slightly misshapen and one or two of them even appears to have a small chip in the side. Here's an example right here. You can see on the right side there seems to be a little bit of a chip in the Sapili. I would think for a company who made its name by putting wood into watch bezels, dials, and bracelets that they'd have a much more precise way of cutting these pieces to fit correctly. They did a far better job with the circular angled bezel than they did with these simple looking rectangles. Then you have the feel of the bracelet. You would think that wide equals comfortable, but A, this bracelet is wide and thick and made out of steel, so it's heavy. I can say that it adds a good balance with the fairly heavy case, but the weight is noticeable on the wrist. Then there's the issue of the link shape. Because they have these rectangular blocks of wood in them, they're square between the links where the links meet, which means that the gap between links is greater than on many steel link bracelets to allow the links to swivel, and that slightly larger gap has a tendency to snag hairs on your wrist throughout the day. I'm not even a very hairy person as you can see here, and even for me, it caught hairs pretty often which was unpleasant. Value on this watch isn't very good, and I mean that in the quantitative sense. 
I review a lot of watches on this channel that I don't like personally, but I wouldn't say that they're not a good value because I don't like them. After all, we all have different styles. The issue here comes in when you look at the price of this watch versus what you're actually getting. Yes, the wood is a unique touch and probably why you're watching a review on an original grain in the first place. But when you subtract the wood and you look at the fact that you're getting a solid but cheap quartz movement inside a case that lacks any type of real inspiration, around a dial that's poorly executed and all attached to a bracelet that's heavy and uncomfortable, you have to ask yourself if the wood is worth the price. As of the time of this review, the cheapest I could find this watch online for was $207. For that Money, I've literally reviewed well made mechanical timepieces from better known brands for less money than this. So, in my objective opinion, the uniqueness of the wooden inserts just doesn't justify the price here. If this watch were $100 or less, I would definitely say that it's just mostly up to your individual aesthetic preferences. But for more than double that, I just can't see the value in it. Well, I hope you enjoyed this review. If anything, you're starting to learn that all I do is honesty over here. Should I time this? So, if you're looking to see uh, what I would honestly score any watch, including ones that you have, uh, feel free to send them in. I will review them and send them back. You can email me at shouldITimethis at gmail.com. I will tell you where to send the watches, and then I will insure them and send them back to you. And if you would like to see a lot more of these watch reviews, plus have one week early access to all my new watch reviews, and just support the channel in general, uh, definitely get to my link at the top of the video description and sign up on Patreon. And that's it. I'll see you all at the next one.